This is an environmental fly-through video of some of the other spaces in the world of Amalur throughout the course of Reckoning. Now, this is by no means all our environments. It's really only a tiny portion of them. But hopefully, it'll give you a sense of the breadth and scale and variety that you'll find in the world. It's important for you to know that this is not cinematic. This is all only well, cinematic and sensitive as video, but it's all captured directly from the game in our most recent build. These are all places you can visit, explore, quest, and kill things in the world of Reckoning. Enjoy this first look at Reckoning, and here we're going to open the floor in just a second for some Q&A. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have about 10 minutes for our Q&A session. We have a very short window of question time before we are um, thrown out of the room. So please, very quickly, we have, like I said, a limited amount of time. If you have a question, please come up to Alex and Nadine, I'm sorry, Martine, and uh, we will get things going. I'm Brad, and I have a very quick and specific question. Uh, I have a bit of an aqua fetish. Is there swimming or underwater swimming in this game at all? Hmm, maybe. There we go. Uh, yeah, I can answer that. Swimming, yes. Underwater swimming, no. Although we do have dive points where you can go down and find loot. Thank you. Hi. Uh, Sam Armstrong. Um, I was wondering how you guys are handling your targeting system. Um, it seemed to be almost automatic, but is there a button press for it? No, it's a soft lock system. You basically stick in the direction you want to fight, and if you're not sticking, it uses spacing, but it keeps your target for you. Thank you. Hi, uh, Tim Brown. Okay. Uh, is there a difficulty slider? Uh, yeah, it's not an actual like, slider with lots yeah. of granularity. It's modes, but yeah. Okay, cool. Great, Karen. Um, of the major uh, classes, how many individual destinies or the ranges um, by the end of the game uh, do you expect? I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say that yet. PR people, maybe? A lot. Uh, there we go. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. That works. That's accurate. Uh, my name is James. Um, are you guys <laughs> planning to incorporate a morality system at all? We don't do systemic morality in Reckoning. We have a lot of moral choices to be made for the player, but we don't have like a, a good evil meter or anything like that. Instead, everything, every choice you make, whether it's moral or not, is handled on sort of a case-by-case -case basis. So if you do something that pisses somebody off, you might have to pay for that later. But it's not that someone else is going to know that you are five points evil because you did that or anything like that. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, my name is Justin. Um, I was just curious, and I'm not sure if you can talk about it, but. Uh, where this takes place on the timeline versus the MMO project that you're working on. And also, it's my understanding that this was under development by Big Huge before the acquisition of 38. Um, how did that affect the de development of this game from the direction that it was already taking? All right, so two-part question there. The first part, we are set 2,000 years before the time of Copernicus. Uh, so it's a different age, and you'll hear a lot more about that as we get to start talking about Copernicus more in the future. 
As far as the other question goes, yeah, Big Q's was working on an RPG, so, and this was, you know, two years ago, we established uh, the base tech, the tools, a lot of the things we're using to build Reckoning now over that time, so we got a really pretty handy head start. As far as the fiction of the world, the art style, everything you're actually seeing, all of that started fresh when we were acquired by 38 Studios. We crafted a brand new story in that 10,000 year history. Everything you see from uh, the creatures around you um, to the story elements and the quests, it's all brand new since the acquisition. Awesome, thank you guys. Hello, uh, my name is Sroll. Um, first, uh, I have two things. Uh, first thing, multiplayer, any direction with that? I, the direction it's, it's is a, no. Okay, no, that's good. <laughs> Second, uh, I, I saw when you were fighting with the uh, mage. Now, I wasn't sure, when he's running low on uh, mana, was there any sort of redirection of projectile, like if someone was like shooting you, and you could sort of take that back and throw it back at them, or? or? There is absorption, yes. Absor sort of an absorption, okay, that's it, thank you. Cool. In all seriousness, regarding the multiplayer thing, the big reason, or at least one of the big reasons why we're not doing with Reckoning, there's an MMO in the other studio. So they got the multiplayer pretty, pretty well covered. Hi, my name is Casey. I wanted to know if there are customizable controls, or if not, what the default button is for rolling or dodging. So we're still experimenting with that. It's possible we'll do different controller maps. At least on the console, we're not planning for like a remap every button level of thing. If, if we do anything like that, it'll be just like changing presets. Uh, currently, roll or teleport is on the B button on the Xbox controller. Thank you. Hey, I'm Josh. Uh, you said there were five major zones in the world that we're going to be seeing. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering, is, is that like one continent? Is, it, is that the whole world? Or, or lore-wise, is there much more world than that? Oh, yeah. There's, there's, so Reckoning is huge. It, it's kind of hard to talk about this because Reckoning itself is ridiculously huge. The world of Amalur dwarfs even Reckoning. The world of Amalur is, is the size of our planet. It's, it's, it's massive. Um, it takes place, the part that's particularly the Feylands, which is the area uh, where Reckoning takes place, is part of one continent, a strait, and part of another continent. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hey, well, let me ask you a question. Oh, what the hell? I just wanted to quickly ask, to what extent will the reception of this game have any effect on how you design or think about the subsequent MMO? How are, how are the two going to feed together? Well, we expect this game to kick ass first. <laughs> We, we, we want to be the best in the world at what we do, so you set the bar high, and, and that's the bar forever. And I'm very confident in what I've seen and, and what I've watched from this team, that the bar is, is unprecedented for us. And it will be a, a chore. It will, it will be very hard to meet that bar. We will do it, but it's, it's a, we have to, we're, we're coming out with a fantasy RPG. That's not really new uh, and innovative in and of itself. So we have to separate ourselves from the rest of the world, and we do that. I think we've done that through the gameplay experience, the lore, the story. This is a world that will house many, many products, from the toys you see to the single-player game to the MMO to, I mean, it's, we've got Todd McFarlane and Ari Salvatore. We'd be idiots if we weren't doing comic books and stories. And, and but the, the, the first and most important piece is these people have to care about the, the, the game. They have to love the game and care about the, the, the world to want to wanna play it. Thank you.